controls, but I wouldn't call it classical. All right, so despite there being numerous things out here, I'm going to create a tournament because I can. That's a good reason. Um, let me make sure Nightbot's sticking around in my channel just in case I need some automatic moderation. Okay, it's here. Nice. Um, so, yeah, let's make a new tournament. What's so special about this tournament, you may ask? Um, well, one, my mouse just gave out. Um, but you know, other than that, what's special about this is that um, it's going to be for a variant. Um, or rather, for a different starting position. That's what I meant to say. Because, like, almost every tournament starts from the initial chest start position. And for quite some time, I've been meaning to do some thematic tournaments, and now I have the opportunity to do one, so I should do one. Here. There we go. This is much more ergonomic. Um, so let me pick... I don't know. What opening should I pick? There's some fun lines in here. Like, there's the Halloween Gambit. Everybody likes to do the Bong Cloud, except I'm not a fan of it. There's a Frankenstein Dracula variation of the Vienna. It's pretty heavy theory-wise. Um, what else could I consider here? What might be actually a meaningful tournament to practice? Um, there's a lot of variations here. And I don't want to get caught up on anything, I don't know, that's irrelevant, theory-wise. Um, huh. There's the King's Gambit Declined Falk Beer Counter Gambit. It's kind of fun, but... I want to pick something that's of some theoretical importance, but not too theory-heavy. Something that, like, gives everybody a chance. Um... Uh, I say that and I keep thinking of all kinds of ultra-sharp lines, because those are ones that tend to gain my attention. Oh, the Peerts! The Peerts! This is theoretical. Um... Hmm. I don't know if I could find people interested in the Peerts, though. And there's the Schliemann, which is way theory-heavy. I don't want to go into that. Um... There's the Stonewall Dutch. Which is not everybody's favorite opening. Um, there's the Nimzo Indian. Oh, there's the Queen's Indian Defense. Or is the Queen. I, I thought I saw it here. Where's the QID? Where'd the QID go? Here it is. E12. That's a nice, um, fun opening to play. We could play 0 minute, 0 second chess. No. Um, or we could do something more sensible, like 3 2. Yeah, I'm going to set up a 3-2 Queen's Indian tournament, and we're all going to learn the Queen's Indian today. And we're going to see if we can gather enough support to actually run this tournament. So, uh, this is not a private tournament. Anybody can join up. Uh, I'm guessing people won't want to play if it's rated, so we'll make this casual. And here we go. This should be fun. I do hope people will join. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It's the Queen's Indian, though, so you have to consider, like, everybody had a good time yesterday, or most everybody did. And to that end, um, your odds today are probably as good as anybody else's. Um, but yeah, don't feel compelled to play if you're not comfortable with it. I'm just saying, like, I think everybody's going to have some fun playing in this event. Um, on account of their opponents perhaps not being in optimal shape. Alright, it's just the cursor. Okay, so the cursor's doing pretty well. I like this mouse. This mouse works. So, let's save those settings. And, you know, hopefully get enough people to join up. And if not, well, I'll just have to pick a different opening. Um, now we got a second player. Excellent. Um, 
Which, I mean, hopefully we'll have enough to actually run a tournament. Um, uh, I should put it out there that um, I have played one game, one tournament game, in which my opponent has played a Queen's Indian. And I lost that game in about 15 moves. And I think that was over 10 years ago. So, theory-wise, I perhaps am not the expert on this opening. Um, but I just want to put it out there that perhaps I have more expertise in this opening than everybody else on the site. So, uh, just in case you think that's an unfair advantage, I do want to posit that before people join up. Um, but no, I think the idea is, though, black's supposed to put a bishop on b7 and attack stuff. Um, pretty sure that's the idea. So, got a couple minutes left until the QID tournament starts. Um, once again, anybody's welcome to participate. You just need to go navigate to the tournament page and find the Queen's Indian Defense Arena. Um, yeah, I should post a link, but I um, the computer I'm watching the, the chat window on isn't the same as the one I'm streaming from. So posting a link is actually quite challenging from my uh, vantage point. I've got two computers here um, because I just am not able in my space to hook up two monitors to a computer. So I'm a bit challenged in posting links to my own chat window. Um, now maybe if I had a bot, I could have a bot do that automatically anytime I join a tournament and it just announces the URL in the channel, but yeah. Um, but again, I the other reason I haven't posted it is because I think everybody's probably watching the other streamers, and so um, I might just have to do something other than starting with the tournament. I might have to start with, I don't know, training. Training's not a bad thing. <laughs> uh, yep, you know we're all in this for the money. At this point I have to pull like an Aladdin-like move where I say, oh, but I didn't wish for you to do that. Oh. You'd have to see Aladdin to appreciate it, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I think that I'm probably just going to switch over to doing some tactics or coordinate training or something here. Um, because starting my stream with a tournament is perhaps not my strongest move. Um, so I probably need to start with something else, and then once I have an audience, then do the tournament probably how this needs to go. Hindsight is 2020. Three, two, one. Oh, hey, look, Roundup joined. I'm gonna get my butt kicked in by Roundup. Uh, I mixed metaphors there. I got 25 seconds to find a move. Um, Knight C3, maybe? Okay. Um, Alright, yeah, this is a good position, maybe, I don't know, um, is it I, E4? I have a feeling I might lose this to Rondep, but fear not, it is unrated. See, I don't know, like, if bishop b4, bishop e7, bishop a6, or bishop b7 are supposed to happen, and or c5 and d5. Um, I just have no idea what the sense of timing in this opening is. And I know it's pretty important theory-wise to, um, to make good developing moves and not give up lots of space. Um... So I'm thinking castle and then like b4 and a4 or something. 
Um, this is definitely a learning experience, because... Okay, so this is attacked twice. And I know in the Nimzo Indian I could play Queen C2 to defend that. Um, I'm questioning, should I just let it go here, or should I defend it? It's probably better to defend it. The alternative might be to go, like, Knight D2. Um, I don't like the idea of just E5, because um, then he's got Knight E4, and I've just conceded the center for no reason. So I'm thinking Queen C2, I guess this Rook to D1? Alright, so am I supposed to play B4? Um, huh. All this is making me rethink my Knight C3 move, which was necessary to defend E4, um, or was prophylactic in that sense, but um, now this is getting really challenging. So if I play b4 here, I think he plays d5. I could play e5. Um, and he's taken the e4 square. But what else am I supposed to do? Maybe bishop f4, just because that develops my bishop. And starts to attack at this... And expose some weakness there. Okay, at least at this point I've connected my rooks. So I could move my rook to any file that I want. Um, so... Okay. So my big idea was that I wanted to take this. Or at least threaten to take it. Um, I'm going to occupy the center this way. And I expect that it'll play e5 and we'll get into some weird check Benoni. Uh, transposition. So, as long as I lock down on these squares, I should be okay here. Now, it's difficult for either player to orchestrate a breakthrough, but I think it might be easier for me than it is for my opponent at this point. Okay, so he's trying to build pressure on that. Um, so... I can't hit d6 anymore. f4 is a logical break. I'm not sure how to achieve it. I played bishop d2 because I was afraid of knight g4. Um, I think I just have to play this like a king's indian, right? So we just play this up, and then g3, and then move the knight and play f4. And I could shuffle my bishop back to e3 here. I'm not sure what he's doing. Okay. Um. Yeah, this is confusing. Also, bishop g5 seems reasonable. Somehow. Okay, so I'm not sure what... Oh. Okay, I've got to pull back here. But, I'm still not sure what's going on. Like, it's typically difficult for black to get in pawn breakthroughs in this opening, I think. I'm not even sure about that. Alright, so... Hopefully I'm not hanging everything. This one's for all the marbles. So, if this fails, um... That hurts. Yeah, so I'm thinking bishop d3 next. Um, so I've kind of connected my pieces. Oops! Ha ha ha! Alright, uh, I lose my bishop, so yeah, it's gg. I'm curious what happened this game. Um, so let's take a look. I understand that the tournament's in progress, but probably two other players in the tournament must be in a game at the moment, so... Um, yeah. Alright, so... Oh! I was just better the entire game until I blundered. And Queen G2 is something I was considering, except I kept talking. 
and I was in time pressure and I made a hasty move. So this is actually a good game. I'm gonna bookmark it even though I lost. <laughs> That's one heck of a blunder. I'm just saying. Alright. Oh. So Jim Jam Jim Jim Jum whatever is um elected to withdraw from the event. That's too bad. Hey, we got another game with Ronda. Alright, so he played bishop e7. Wait. Okay. It wasn't my move. Oh, I need some kind of indicator just telling me it's my move. <laughs> At least in the start position, that'd be helpful, because I'm forgetful, apparently. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure whether bishop e7 or bishop b7 is supposed to get played first. Okay, so... Can I just transpose into, like, a Nims... No, Nimzo Indian has bishop b4. What can I transpose into, if anything? Um... Hmm. I think I just castle and see what he comes up with. Okay, so that's not queen d2. So he has the flexibility to move his bishop back if he wants to. Um, and I think it's in this kind of category of position that bishop b7 ordinarily gets played. The idea is just to take this square. Um, okay, so can't I just take this square and I'll place a piece on it, or am I missing something? Like how many times am I going to lose this opening in this tournament? It's going to be fantastic. Um, I think these thematic tournaments are an excellent idea. Uh, regardless of how many times I lose, I'm still going to stick by that premise. Or that uh, proposition. You can beat me once, you can beat me a hundred times, but I'll still think that these um, events, at least the ones that promote good openings, are definitely a way to try out ideas against uh, like-minded individuals. So if I play Okay, if I play this pawn takes... Let me switch my thoughts. So if I play this pawn takes, he plays c5. So I think d pawn takes is more correct. It expands the scope of this bishop. Although, is he really going to play c5? Because then I could just take it. But I don't want to put more pawn... Oh. One way I'm blocking my bishop, one way I'm blocking my rook. Um... You're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. So... Alright, I'm gonna dislodge the knight. I don't see any way that that knight can stay there. I mean, he could stay there and I just take it and he puts the bishop in its place and then I kick the bishop somehow, but... Um, if that's how we're going anyway, why don't I start by... Well, no, <laughs> I'm setting up chain reactions and combinations without thinking about their consequence. That's a dangerous thing to do. Um, I'm going to step out of this discovered attack. Again, this knight has nowhere to go right now, um, so I'm just going to try keeping to build up pressure on it. Um, I do have the bishop here, so theoretically I should have a somewhat more flexible position. Um, certainly I'm better able to choose when we trade and what we trade, but I'm not sure if that flexibility offers anything other than just psychological pressure. Um, now if there's not sure if there's any tangible benefit to it. Okay, so I have to do this and then exchange there. 
Not that. Knight. So I can protect e6. Okay, and now things get interesting. Um, now things get interesting, just tactically. Um, well, this is getting really sharp. I'm going to start trading off. I was debating c5 also. I didn't see... Well, there's no concrete advantage to c5, so we'll stick with this. Um, he's got a bishop that does bear down into my territory, which is really annoying. Okay, and now he doesn't have such a bishop. So... For sure, I'm confused about what's going on here. Um, hmm... Well, this is a tactic. I spotted a tactic, guys. Also, that gets the bishop off of this line, so... Um, guessing queen b4 will follow, although then I hit with c5. Oh! So much for my guess. Um, can I play e5? Oh man, this is getting sharp. We take here. And the point wasn't so much that um, I'm winning a pawn or anything, because I'm totally not. But it does allow... Well, if he does pawn takes, fun things happen. If he does rook takes, I'm not sure where we go. Um, rook takes, maybe I have some shot to win this. Okay, so I'm going to try this. Just building more pieces on top of that square. Okay. Um, and now we have an exchange. Okay. And I need to defend everything. Everything is now defended. Let's get the bishop to a better space. Um, rook d8 is not happening, apparently. Um, okay, so let's cut off d4. So there's no knight d4 now. Okay, rook f8's forced. Now we get a fun little endgame. Or not. Um, okay, we're going to try to support this and hopefully build up to an f4 advance. Um, Alright, we get a rook trade, maybe? Yep, we get a rook trade. And now we have a fun little endgame. Um, where his knight is very flexible and very nimble, and I have to watch out for what it can do. Um, I'm not hesitating to take it if he does move it forward. At least assuming it makes sense for me to take it, but I think it does. Okay, so I'm threatening to push forward here. Yeah, he has to stop my threat. And I'm trying to break with b5, and... Now I do break with b5. Um, not sure why he took that. Oh, he had to. He had to. Never mind. Uh, so I take there. My bishop gets loose. Um, again, I don't think this matters. So... Uh, if I trap my bishop, bad things happen, right? I don't know. We're gonna see. We're gonna take the road not taken, guys. So I have to go here. Um, and then my big idea is bishop d3. Where... Okay. There we go. I tricked him, somehow. Um, and soon we're gonna get an exchange. Maybe. 
Um, I shouldn't have done that. There were better squares my bishop could have gone to. Okay. I am badly misplaying this. Well, at least I didn't completely blunder it. That's good. Um, yeah, how do I make progress here? Yeah, there's a way to make progress. Hang the bishop. That's a kind of progress. Um, fortunately, there's no knight d3 fork at the end of this combination. So I'm just exceptionally lucky here. Um, yeah, if there were a knight d3 fork winning my queen, that would be a different matter altogether. Whew! What a game. Let's analyze it. Um, let's see. So I haven't looked at my chat window in a few minutes. It's, I actually have an audience. How about that? Um, yeah, no, it's easier playing with a knight, because knights are tricky pieces, and so it's really difficult in time trouble to predict what a knight's going to do next. Um, now, they say that you should analyze your games before getting Stockfish or some other computer to look at them, and I fully agree with that in concept, but I'm trying to run a show here, and so because the show must go on, I'm using computer analysis to accelerate the rate of this analysis at the expense of greatly decreasing the quality. Um, yeah, obviously he just can't take the bishop. Like, you would expect that normally this knight e5, knight d3 would just fork king and queen, and uh, that would be the end of that. But in this case, um, I was just really lucky that that didn't work out. Oh. Wow. So just looking at the graph, apparently, after this point, I'm just better. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah, I thought I was better here. But apparently at no point after gaining material was I lost. Um, I was really worried that somehow this would hang, and my I wouldn't be able to promote, and he'd just take all my pawns. Um, so... Yeah, I should have done um, bishop d5 instead of c4, apparently. Yeah, after I played c4, I recognized that I kind of trapped my bishop. I wasn't sure if it mattered or not. I did like the fact that I took this square, um, but it just felt wrong in some way. So apparently this is what should have been played out. Um, I don't think white would have played that. Oh, wait. You know, he still have he's just in Zugzwang, that's the point. Like, if he could just pass here, black would have to pass, and you just keep passing back and forth until black plays c4, and white plays knight d4. But because white cannot pass, he has to make some moves, so king c2, okay. And then this hits the knight, and black has just spent a tempo. Instead of going bishop b3, this is a different way to zigzwang white, and force him to move his knight somewhere where the knight doesn't want to go. Uh, and then you check him, and you just advance your king forward. But is this enough to win? That I don't know. Yeah, it looks like... Shoot, I'm going to have to try this out later and look into it, because that looks like a really difficult endgame. Um... Yeah, for sure it's easier in time trouble to just shuffle the pieces and hope that something positive shows up. Um, oh man, Rondup's lost two in a row? Ouch. Wow. Okay, Nico. Alright, I think Knight C3, that's what I started with on game one. Alright, yeah, this is what I've been expecting, and I think this is where my knowledge of the opening ends. Um, just kind of unfortunate for me. And especially because my opponent's rated 2,000, so I'm going to need to invent something really good. Um, like, I'm considering things like... I think I've seen this in a Nimzo Indian, you can get away with this kind of setup. I don't know if it works in the Queen's Indian. 
I'm willing to wager that if it worked, I would probably be familiar with it. So I'm just going to guess that bishop f4 maybe? Try to induce d6, I guess? Um, so I guess that's my plan. Well, in fairness, a after that one game I played um, where my opponent beat me in like 15-some moves, I did go uh, a day or two later and look that up in an opening book. Um, and I did learn that um, however I played it was just completely wrong. And maybe this is something I'm misremembering or remembering in some way as to what you're actually supposed to do. Um, okay, so this traps his bishop. I'm going to take the bishop pair. Unless he goes bishop a5. Is bishop a5 playable there? Man, I hadn't even thought about that. That's really weird. Okay, well now d6 is loose. So, well, yeah, even if he puts a pawn there, it's still a loose square. Although we've kind of moved into Nimzo Indian territory, I think. Um, I do want to attempt to grab this square. So I'm just going to continue piling up on that. And hopefully I can get in, like, e4, e5, or some other reasonable maneuver um, before my opponent crashes through wherever he does. If I succeed in grabbing enough space, perhaps we're going to transpose not into a Nimzo Indian, because my opponent's development for a Nimzo Indian is a little bit behind. Usually in the Nimzo Indian, you'd have this kind of already in place, I think. Um... Wow. Okay. Um, yeah. I guess that's doable. So I'm just going to give my bishop some room back here. So, if he does attack uh, my bishop, like if he does this, I just go back. Um, okay. So I've been trying to grab this square. I'm just going to put up another piece to support it. And I guess that means I can push. And since we're not in Nimzo Indian territory, we've probably migrated into Hedgehog territory. Um, it'd be interesting to get... <laughs> I'm not sure that Zug Attic knows much about this opening either. Um, but it would be interesting to get his take if he did understand any of this. Um... Okay, so e5, e4 is kind of a threat here. It probably was even before my last move, um, but it just keeps getting more serious or dire. Um, come to think of it, yeah, I probably would have gotten crushed by e5, e4 if he just played it. Um, let's step out of that tactic. Where do I go? Uh, <laughs> okay, to h2, I guess. And we're going to redevelop via g1. Um, well, this is anything but ideal. Um, this is not the position you want to have a bishop pair in. Uh, okay, so I'm going to step forward here. And if I have to trade off my bishop to um, keep this position, I'll trade it. Oh, hang on. I missed a tactic. Okay. Apparently, I'm not the only one who missed it. Um, 
I'm going to play this. That way I don't lose a pawn. But man, this looks hideous. This looks so hideous. And I can't even push e4, because that would trap my bishop. Um, yeah, I'm going to trade before I lose something. Um, okay, well, we've reached another check Benoni. Again, I just need to keep anchor on both of these squares somehow. So, if the longer I can prevent or forestall that, the better. Um, let's support the center and then threaten to... Okay. Threaten to push f4. Um, f4 is going to be a little challenging here. Um... All right, well, let's give it a shot anyway. Obviously, I can't do pawn takes. Oh, okay. Now I'm just very confused. So take there, develop my queen. Now my knight's not hanging anymore if I take back with the pawn. But his e-pawn's also pinned, so uh, risks are fewer. Um, so yeah, tactics, apparently. Why didn't I do knight takes? Do I just not enjoy winning? I don't know. Chess is hard. That's the moral of the story, is that chess is just hard. Um, right, so back we go. Threatening knight here. Alright, still threatening the knight move. There it is. Now maybe knight takes isn't best. Let's try this. All right. Why do knight takes when you can just checkmate? Interesting game. Um, uh, so I have bookmarked this. So again, these are the sorts of things I should be giving to Zug instead of my interesting miniatures and misadventures. Things in like theoretically significant openings where I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> um. So, yeah, what a messy position, for sure. Uh, so, okay, here's the evaluation. This goes we all the way up, and then somehow I'm losing material or advantage here. Oh, so, yeah, I did see rook g5. I didn't have time to calculate it, but apparently it just wins the house. Um, so, okay, so I was marginally worse at this point in the game with f4. Yeah, f4 was a bit rushed. I played it because I didn't see anything. Um, apparently back here is where I should have played it, f4. But I thought this was extremely loose. Like, my knight is hanging, right? So how could I possibly get away with f4 here? But um, Stockfish likes it, so that's a thing. Um... But, yeah, my earlier play isn't really justified. Like, when I trade off my bishop on bishop takes knight, that's not justified unless I can follow it up with playing f4. And I'm kind of wondering why here... I mean, here's a reasonable place... No, no. with this knight on f6, not so much, because I can't tactic my way out of things. Um, like, if I play f4 here, takes... If I do rook takes, which is what I want to do, I can't tactic my way out of this because the knight's here. Um, so knight f6 actually does slow down some of this initiative here. Uh, so rook ae one's reasonable. Queen e7's an excellent move, threatening and discovery. Uh, and apparently here's the moment where I should, or a moment where I should have just played f4 anyway. Um, with main line of this being, well, we just develop. And black has to uh, grovel a little bit, and white grabs a little bit of space, and you just play a chess game from here. Nothing too exceptional happens. I mean, pieces do get traded, but um, this is a pretty ordinary position. White has a weak c4 pawn, black has a weak d6 pawn. So that's 
a common Nimzo or Chuck Benoni thing. Actually, I don't know much about the Chuck Benoni either. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand. Like, with no time on the clock, it's very hard to make strategic decisions. I'm just saying that even if I had time on the clock, I'm not sure I understand what was going on there. Um, yeah, so this is unrated for those who have concerns about that. Alright, I'm going to try bishop b7 first and see what he comes up with. Bishop f4. Okay. Now I could... Yeah, I think I can negotiate my way into Nimzo Indian territory here. Right? Or am I just making this up? Like, I could swear this is a thing. Or maybe this is where knight d2 happens. Um, okay, so there's e3. Um, I think this is where I can get away with knight e4. And... Okay, I was thinking something more aggressive might happen against my knight, and I'd support it with f5, but, um... Hmm... Well, I sure love moving my pieces twice in the opening, don't I? Um... Okay, I'm gonna trap my bishop... for reasons unknown to me. Okay, and I guess, oh, having put my bishop on b7, moving it to a6 seems like a wasted tempo. I suppose that's the point of not playing bishop b7 right away, is that um, I've kind of limited my options. Alright, so I'm, gonna, I'm intending this, and I'm also intending some of this stuff. I just want to know, like, what's white supposed to do in this opening? Okay. Let's play knight a5 and see where we go. At the last minute, I did have this knight a5 inspiration here, so... Maybe this is actually reasonable. Um, I'm not sure. This is just one big ol' cloudy position. Um, hmm. Well, pawns don't go that way, but yeah, this this is a target. Um, my opponent has the bishop pair, but I've... I think I've got c5 under control. I'm not sure what else I need to be worried about. Worried might be the wrong word, but concerned. Um, so I can go back and just target this. Oh! Okay. Guys, I invented a gambit, apparently. Um, yeah. So I think I'm giving an exchange best case here. I'm not sure worst case what happens. So there's this, and I mean, there's also this silly cheapo, but that's not going to happen. Um, my main point is that I'm getting my queen out of the way, so I have time for this move. Um, okay. So this um, shuts off the attack against g2, so there's now an extra blockader on the long diagonal. And I'm also protecting c5, <laughs> incidentally, which wasn't my goal. Um, I could do queen e3. Like, if I don't play that now, he could play f4, and I'm not sure where my queen goes. So I guess I'm starting with queen f3, and then protecting this pawn. This just feels like I'm getting sliced to shreds here somehow. 
but I'm not seeing how. Um, so I just continue developing and attacking, and maybe this will work. Um, for sure, Queen G5 was an excellent surprise move, if not a strong move in its own merits. Um, so now I don't have this option of knight c4 to e3, because e3 is occupied. My bishop's not doing very much, so I will exchange it. And now I hit this, and am I losing a queen? I think I'm losing a queen, guys. Pretty sure I'm losing a queen. Um... Hmm. It's quite the conundrum. Alright. Well, we'll make do without the queen, somehow. Um, so now I've got a rook for a queen. Rooks are the same as queens, right? I mean, minus the whole moving diagonally thing. So... Oh, yeah, you're right. I do need to support my B pawn. I can't just support my A pawn. Um, okay. It's an interesting position. Uh, oh, he's going to break with F4 if he can. Let's see if he can do it. Okay. I have to do this. Oh, but okay, now I see where this is going. Yeah, no, I have no way to defend against that. Um, well, I could do the obnoxious thing, I suppose. Um, no, that doesn't work. Yeah, this is GG. Well played. Well played. So I'm not even sure where I went wrong. Huh. Okay. And with that, Roundup takes the lead. And he deserves it. I think he beat me once or twice there. Um. No, like, if I do rook c8, he just plays rook a1, rook a6, queen a4, rook a7. Eventually, I have a queen versus rook endgame and just too many weak pawns. There's no way to salvage that. Black gets zugzwonked in all lines. Um, I mean, it's really cute to see it in action, but there's no saving that. Oh, some knight b2 business. Maybe I wasn't losing a queen after all. Maybe I threw in the towel too early. Um, uh, so that was back here somewhere. Some knight b2 business. Um, yeah, I guess I could have cut my losses instead of making it a queen for a rook. I could have just been down a knight. That's an improvement. Um, yeah. Stockfish also recommends that, but I guess my big blunder here was g3 allowing bishop f4, and I just allowed my queen to get trapped. Um, So yeah, I took here, um, and that was that. So, uh, I guess if I'm looking for something instructive to say about that, um, I don't know what to say. It was an interesting game, um, not especially instructive, other than the fact that you just shouldn't get your queen trapped. Um, I was feeling really confident after this d5, because I didn't see what white was up to. Um, but uh, I found this strong bishop a6, and then he plays g3. And if I just played queen h6 here, I would have preserved my advantage that I got. Um, granted, it takes accurate follow-through. 
Um, but I'd like to hope that I could play some accurate moves and get at least a reasonable position. Um, yeah, that was a good game. And let's go check out the standings. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Um. Oh. Oh. Apparently there was a tie in the standings. And um, we're hearing that. Anyhow, yeah, tiebreakers happened as they did. Um. So what was my second to last loss? Um. I'm trying to remember, because I thought there was something instructive about it. I've already forgotten how this went. Oh. Um, did I bookmark this? Yes, I did. So, yeah, I was just commenting that I missed a combination here. But earlier, where did this really start to go well? Oh, yeah, this is just ultra-sharp and tactical, and I just had to believe in the position here. Unlike that other position in my final round where I believed too much and I lost my queen because I wasn't looking. And, I mean, it's one thing to see that bishops go backwards, but um, it's another thing to see that they go backwards once, and then after having gone backwards once, they go backwards a second time. And by that I'm talking about, um, not the pawn, the bishop. I'm talking about bishop f4 followed by bishop e3. Finding either one of these is tricky enough. Finding them both, you kind of deserve to win the queen at that point. Um, so that said, uh, this was a fun little stream to do. Um, and given how relatively quiet this is compared to some other days that I've done this, um, I think I might t take a break from this and maybe come back either later today or maybe during the marathon or something. We'll do something more thematic. I'll see if I can brainstorm some openings to try out during the marathon. This may be one of them. How do we even get this position? This is... Let's play knight f6, e6, b6. And you have to have an opponent who plays d4 and c4. Um, hmm. At any rate, yeah, knight f6 and e6 are playable in a wide variety of positions, but knight e6 discourages... well... Like, if I play e6 first, if he plays, if I have an opponent who plays d4, I would have to start with knight f6 if I want to follow with e6. Otherwise, I get a French. And a French would be um, not my particular style of play. Um, so, yeah, maybe I'll try this out during the marathon and see how I score with it. That could be fun. Um, so, yeah, thanks to one and all for watching. And I'll hope to see you around sometime. Eh, have a good weekend.